Hey guys, what's up, Roman here from Tech Guides, and today I'm going to show you the best window settings to boost FPS in Call of Duty Warzone. So in this video, we are looking at the best settings in first the NVIDIA control panel, how you should set up your advanced options.ini file, which as a matter of fact, if not set up properly, will actually make Warzone completely unplayable. Then we are going to look at what effect both RAM frequency and capacity can have on Warzone and finally what influence recording with Shadowplay has on your FPS. Now if you are looking for the best Call of Duty Warzone in-game settings instead, then check out my ultimate Warzone FPS guide linked in the card right now where I benchmarked every graphical setting in the game. So for today's video, I once again benchmarked Warzone, but this time using a whole slew of different window settings, both on my primary computer as well as on my secondary PC. Now the production of today's video actually required an insane amount of work, since I had to restart Warzone for each individual setting that I wanted to test. I then jumped into a live match of Warzone, got set up on my usual secret benchmarking spot and recorded 10 second segments of 7 different field of views to get a robust measurement of the game's performance. So if you enjoy these kinds of super dense and actually benchmark based videos, then drop a like and subscribe for future videos just like this. Now I'd like to go through the different segments in decreasing order of influence on in-game's performance, but if you're simply interested in one of the topics that I cover in this video, then use the chapters in the video description. Now hands down the single most important setting that you want to absolutely make sure to set up properly is the render worker count in the advanced option file. You can find this file by going to C, Users, Your Username, Documents, Call of Duty Modern Warfare and the Players folder. Open this file with a text editor of your choice and here you'll find the Render Worker Count. Now what this option essentially affects is the number of threads that the game can utilize on your computer. Now by default this option should be set to half the amount of threads that you have on your system. If you don't really know what a thread is or how many CPU cores your PC has, then you can simply bring up the task manager by pressing Ctrl Shift Escape, go to the performance tab and here you can see how many physical cores your CPU has. Note that most modern CPUs have multi-threading enabled which means that you actually have twice the number of threads here indicated as logical processors which basically means how many threads that are available for simultaneous computations. Now if that all doesn't make an awful lot of sense to you then that's completely fine. Simply go into the task manager, check out what number you have under logical processors, divide this number by 2 and make sure that you put this number here in render worker count. When I try to decrease or increase this number on both of my systems then you can see that I will always get the highest performance whenever setting render worker count to half the amount of logical threads that I have on my PC. In case of my primary computer, here shown in blue, this is the case at 8 threads because it's an 8 core processor, whereas on the other hand my second system, here shown in orange, peaks out once again in the middle which is exactly at 4 threads or in other words simply half the amount of threads that this system has in total. Now when only looking at the average FPS, then frankly you're not really seeing much of a difference between setting this option to half the amount of threads that you have compared to setting it to the max amount of threads, so basically all of the threads are only dedicated to Warzone, which is the rightmost measurement point here, especially for my second PC. However, this really only very poorly reflects gaming experience because the game becomes completely unplayable when setting this option to the max amount of logical threads that you have on your PC. So to show this effect, I also show the 1% lows FPS that I'm getting in each scenario. So for all subsequent settings, I'm showing both the average FPS in darker colors as well as the 1% lows in the slightly lighter colors. As you can see, when setting render worker count to the maximum number of available threads, then performance completely collapses to basically unplayable performance, especially on my second PC. So if you too have absolutely unplayable performance in Call of Duty Warzone, then go into the advanced option files and make sure that render worker count is not set to the maximum possible threads, but rather to half the amount of threads that you have on your system. 
Apparently, this setting can be set to the max number of rides available on your system per default by the game if you run a Ryzen 5 CPU. This has actually been reported by tech testers, you can check out their video in the card right now. Now, other than render worker count, there is also video memory scale. This option basically dictates how much GPU memory Warzone can utilize. Now, from my performance benchmarks, I can't really tell much of a difference between 60, 85 and 100%. When reducing the setting all the way down to only 40%, then this is where I start to see some decrease, especially in the 1% lows. However, I personally do not recommend to set this to 100% because this can lead to stuttering in game. So if you also sometimes experience that issue that the game goes from being completely smooth to being basically unplayable, then you might want to decrease video memory scale from 0.85 to maybe 0.8 or 0.7. Now, something else that I'd like to talk about is the amount of memory that your system has, as well as the frequency that that memory is actually running in. In my case, the default on my primary system are 64 gigs at 3600 MHz and on my second system, 16 gigs at 3000 MHz. Now, unsurprisingly, in-game performance is completely unaffected by either using 32 or 64 GB of memory. This is way more than the game would ever need and therefore you won't really see much of a performance difference in choosing either of these two options. Generally, most people don't really have 64 gigs anyways because they really don't need it. However, when further decreasing the RAM capacity to only 16 gigabytes, you can see that performance actually slowly starts to measurably decrease in Call of Duty Warzone. If I go even further down to only 8 gigabytes, which I'm going to be doing at single channel, so only one stick of RAM, then the game actually becomes completely unplayable on my primary PC. It simply crashes whenever I try to start into a game and performance very much decreases on my second machine. So what is the takeaway of all of this? Basically, first of all, never ever use single channel memory, so only one stick of memory in your computer. And second of all, 8GB is simply not enough to play Call of Duty Warzone. On the other hand, 16 gigs should be plenty of memory to get a smooth experience out of Warzone, however, the sweet spot is probably at around 32 gigs. Now, besides sheer capacity, obviously there's also frequency. And many people really do not understand that if they buy very expensive RAM that is rated at a very high frequency, that that RAM simply will not run at the rated higher frequency when they simply stick it into their motherboard and call it a day. You really have to go into the BIOS and enable XMP on Intel or the overclocking feature on AMD, which I actually do not know how it's called, but basically you really have to proactively overclock your memory in BIOS in order to make it run at its actual rated speed. So if I do not do this and I do not enable XMP in BIOS, you can see that especially the 1% lows of my primary rig significantly drop compared to any of the other options. Now, I could make a whole video on how to select the best RAM for your specific motherboard, but what it really comes down to is simply putting the name of your motherboard into Google, clicking on the first link, go to support, click on support list, click on the memory support list, and this should actually bring up a PDF with every single memory module on this freaking planet that is compatible with your motherboard. And not only that, you can also see which memory module actually has XMP support. So for example, this one is probably a 3600 MHz memory module which supports XMP, so basically running um, this memory module at its rated speed on this motherboard. On the other hand, if you don't do this, then the RAM will simply run in its native frequency, which is usually only 2133 or 2400 MHz. So in conclusion, memory has a huge effect on performance in Warzone and you have to make sure to use at least 16 gigs and I would highly recommend to enable XMP in your BIOS. Next, let's talk about everybody's favorite option to bash when it comes to low performance in game and that is the Windows Game Mode. You can find it by clicking on the Start menu and typing in Game Mode. Also here we have the Windows Game Bar, which I'm also looking at in my results. As you can see from my measurements, enabling the Windows Game Mode really doesn't have much of an effect at all on the game's performance. 
Average FPS ever so slightly decreased on my main PC, whereas the 1% low stayed absolutely constant on my main PC. And on my second PC, the average stayed completely identical, whereas the 1% lows slightly increased. However, this is definitely within the margin of error. So don't fret, enabling or disabling game mode has absolutely no effect on your game's performance. On the other hand, the Windows Game Bar actually significantly decreased performance on my main PC, whereas once again on my second PC performance remained unaffected. So my recommendation would be to make sure to disable the Windows Game Bar and only if you're live streaming, enable the Windows Game Mode. The next thing that everybody and their mother seems to think makes a significant difference in game's performance is what you set up in the NVIDIA Control Panel. You can find this by right-clicking on your desktop and clicking on NVIDIA Control Panel. Now, when you set Use the Advanced 3D Image Settings, which you can find in Manage 3D Settings, um, many people recommend to change stuff out in the Global Settings. The one thing that I tried out for this video was to change the Power Mode from Optimal Power to Adaptive and Maximum Performance. As you can see from my performance benchmark, performance remained absolutely identical across all of these three options. So the notion that you're getting significantly more performance by setting the power management mode to maximum performance is in my opinion a complete myth. Now when it comes to the other settings, I frankly just like to refer to the in-game settings instead of setting something up in the globals tab because it can mess up what you actually set up in-game. So once again, if you're interested in my in-game recommendations for Call of Duty Warzone, then definitely check out my FPS guide, which is linked both in the card and in the description below. So coming back to the NVIDIA control panel, all I generally recommend is to make sure that all of these options are set to their default. Right, so something else that many people suggest to do is to change execution options on the Modern Warfare Exe itself. You can find it under C, Program Files, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and here you'll find the Modern Warfare Launcher.exe. Click on Properties and Compatibility. Now, what I would also always recommend is to run Modern Warfare as administrator. And just on top of that, there's Disable Full Screen Optimizations. Many people recommend to actually enable this to get higher performance in game. However, my primary PC actually shows quite a significant decrease, especially in the 1% lows when enabling this option. On the other hand, my second PC actually shows an increase both in the 1% lows and average FPS when disabling full screen optimization. So really this option kind of comes down to what sort of system you have. I guess on more high-end system this actually hurts more than it actually helps. Whereas on the other hand if you got more kind of a mid or low uh, range system then enabling this option might potentially help. Finally just for fun I also tested the influence of plugging in a second monitor into my PC when playing Warzone. Note that my second PC really didn't kind of want to play along with two monitors, so I really only have one measurement point for my primary PC, which as you can see is basically unaffected by plugging in a second monitor. Now in this final portion of today's video, I'd also like to talk about the effect of recording using Shadowplay or simply having Shadowplay enabled on your game's performance. Now on both of my machines, simply enabling Shadowplay, uh, which means that you could hit a button to save the last, say, 5 minutes, would lead to a significant decrease in performance. Unsurprisingly, when comparing that to actively recording with Shadowplay, there really isn't much of a difference in terms of performance both in the averages and in the 1% lows, um, which is both the case for recording in 130 megabits as well as only 30 megabits. So recording at a lower bitrate doesn't help you in terms of gaining higher performance in-game. The same is true for lowering the FPS of your recording as well as the resolution. Basically, it doesn't matter at what resolution and at what bitrate you're recording in Shadowplay, you'll always get the exact same decrease in performance compared to having Shadowplay disabled altogether. And that about sums it up for today's video. Hopefully this video really helped you get the highest possible performance out of your computer. If that is the case, then I would really appreciate it if you guys could like this video and subscribe for more content like this. But that's it for today, thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.